Hello everybody, and welcome to How to Make Your Wife Happy and Healthy. In today's episode, we're going to use an instrument in the kitchen that I thought would be a waste of money, but my wife thought it was going to save us a lot of time. After my skepticism, I use it, and I love it just as much as she. So come on everybody, let's get cooking. In today's episode, we're going to make braised short ribs. Normally braised short ribs take a long time to cook. But we bought something that's going to cut the cooking time way down. And here is our new kitchen gadget. Our version is called the Multipot. You may have seen other people use something called Instapot. It's the same idea. We bought it after looking at Amazon and all the reviews. I'm going to show you how to use this to make a quick braised short ribs that's very tasty. Here are the ingredients. 3 pounds of beef short ribs, 1 teaspoon of salt, 1.5 teaspoons of pepper, 1 yellow onion, 1 large carrot, 3 cloves of garlic, 1 russet potato, 2 cups of beef broth, 1 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes, half a cup of red wine, I just buy the cheap stuff, quarter cup of rice vinegar, 2 bay leaves, quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper, 2 tablespoons of chopped fresh parsley. Rice or mashed potatoes is nice to add as a side dish for this. First, you want to prep the vegetables. I'm going to start with the onion. doesn't matter which one you do first. We're going to cut the onion into slices, because it's easiest. Cut the onion in half. Oops. Right off the top. Cut the top part off of the onion. Our usual idea is I cut off the top. Mostly cut off the bottom. So I get to that last little piece, I can let the onion peel itself. Like so. If there's too much onion that's not good in there, just chop it off. Don't eat it. Nothing important. There it goes. There's a the bad part gone. The rest of the onion looks solid. I can take off those two. Slices won't matter. Alright, now I said I wanted slices. I'm just gonna slice it this way. This one helps. I already cut off slice, so I can slice it straight on the board. Perfect. Slices are good. Set those aside. Uh, wash them and set them aside. Next, I'm doing my carrot. First thing I'm gonna do is peel it. I usually peel over a trash can, but to show you how to peel it, I'm going to peel it over a board. Toss those peels away in the trash can. Cut off the top. Cut off the bottom. And slice through your carrot. The more even you get in, the better, but don't work through too far off. Doesn't make that much difference. Potato time. First, I'm going to peel a potato. Again, I usually peel over a trash can. But to show you how to peel it, I'll peel over the cutting board. There's an eye. If you want to do it again, you can get rid of it. Okay, now that we've peeled it, we're going to put it in the water and wash off all the extra stuff on the top. Now we're going to slice it. Well, chop it up. About the same size as the carrots. Set the carrot, <laughs> set the potatoes aside, not the carrots. We're gonna set those aside. I'll handle the onions when I'm ready to put into the pot. I like to grate them, put them in that way. To start off, we're gonna set the multi pot to saute on high. We're gonna put the two tablespoons of oil inside. Two 
That's good. We're going to let that get hot while we prepare the beef to put inside. Okay, we're going to sprinkle our beef with a teaspoon of pepper and a teaspoon of salt. Okay, now we got to wait for the oil to heat up. It's probably getting pretty hot by now. As soon as it gets hot enough, we'll put the beef in to brown it on the outside, sealing the flavor. The pot is nice and hot, so we're going to put on the beef. Now we can't fit it all in at once, so we're going to have to do it in batches. Just looking for a nice brown color on each side. Sort of like this on each side. This is not what you want to see. You want to see it nice and brown. So keep turning them as they get brown. Make sure you leave it long enough so it gets brown on that one side. You can see some nice brown on this side. You want to get it all nice and brown on every side, just like that. They're starting it nice and brown. As each one gets brown, you're going to take it off and put it on a plate. To save it and put it back later. All in all, you should cook it about four minutes per side for each one. This one's browned all around, so we're going to set aside and put it on a plate. Second batch is starting to cook up nicely. If you look right here, these are some brown bits. Those are some brown bits from the cooking procedure. You actually want these brown nuggets in there. Those are little nuggets of flavor that we're going to bring out with the wine later. And if you're not getting those little brown bits down there, you're not letting the beef sit long enough. Make sure it sits long enough to get these little brown bits at the bottom. Now that we've browned all sides of the beef, we're going to take it out, set the pot to medium on saute, and then cook the vegetables. So we're going to set the saute to normal for the vegetables. Okay, put in all the vegetables, cook it in the fat. You should still have some fat left over for when you cook the beef. Now here's where we use a cheese grater to add in the garlic. We're going to saute all the vegetables for about four to six minutes till they're a little soft. From time to time, you want to stir the vegetables so not one side gets too brown. See that browning at the bottom? We'll get rid of it when we use the red wine. Oh, I'm starting to smell the garlic and the onion fragrance. Oh, it smells wonderful. Time to glaze the bottom of the pan with the wine. Nice half a cup going in.
Then use your spatula to scrape up the bottom. You can kind of see, just like magic, the wine takes off all the brown charred beets of the beef. And vegetables, takes it right off. Takes it right off. This will save you on cleaning time later as well. Ah. Gonna add a little more wine. I want a little more to deglaze a little more. Okay, deglaze it is. Now it's time to add in the beef broth. What's that? Oh, it's my pot. Go see how it's done. Okay, now that we successfully glue. Now that we've successfully deglazed the bottom of the pot, we're going to add in the beef broth. Ah. Here is one of my hacks. It's time for an epic food hack. For this dish and all dishes, for beef broth and any broth, we're just going to pour in some water. We added two cups of water. Now we're going to add two teaspoons of the beef granules to make our beef broth. I don't make it beforehand, just make it right in the dish itself. No need to waste your time making that and dirty another pot beforehand. Add a quarter cup of vinegar. A can of tomatoes, two bay leaves, you will discard those later. Those are great for flavor, but we do not want to eat the bay leaf. And a quarter teaspoon of red pepper. We're going to wait for this to boil. Okay, now that the pot is boiling, we're going to add the beef back in, bone side up. As you can see, not all the beef pieces got fully into the broth. But that's perfectly okay. Now we're going to put on our top. And lock it down. Make sure this is venting. This is sealing. Make sure you put the switch to sealing on your multi-pot as we're going to hit to the steamer part now. To get ready to pressure cook, you first have to hit the cancel button so it won't saute anymore. Then hit the pressure cooker button. And we're going to set our time for 45 minutes on high normal. After you wait 20 seconds or so, it's going to lock in the high normal that you just set. And it's going to start cooking. So at this point, it's preheating. It's going to get up to high enough. You'll see some venting of the steam. Then the red knob's going to go up. And that means it's going to start its 45 minute timer for pressure cooking. We have the vent set to seal. So the air is not escaping except through that little, this little part right here. As soon as it pops, it's going to go to 45 minutes under steam pressure. Oh, I can smell the flavor coming through the vents. Very tender. I know I gotta wait 45 minutes for the meat to get tender and fully cooked. Ah, there it is. Button popped up. Now the timer's gonna set itself for 45 minutes. Okay, now the multi pot has finished cooking. It went to keep warm. That timer is telling me how long it's on keep warm. 
We're just gonna let it sit in there and let it naturally vent out the pressure. It'll probably take another 15 minutes. You wanna wait for the red button to pop back down. Okay, it's been about 22 minutes since the timer went off. So we are just gonna open up the vent. Not very much steam coming out. It would be a lot more if you quick release it right after it was done. So we've opened the vent. Oh, I can smell the beef and all the good vegetables already. Mmm. Gotta wait for the pressure to completely release though before we can open it. Great thing with this pot is if you do nothing and leave it plugged in, it's gonna keep warm for you. So you can have a nice hot soup for game day, have it sitting there for the entire day and keep warm. Oh, there it went. The red button popped down. So now we're ready to open up and see what it looks like. I uh, can see the beef has moved away from the bone. It's fall off the bone tender. We'll show that to you in a little bit. We're going to scoop this out. The beef parts out. We're going to put that on a plate. We're going to take the juice, put it into a bowl. How we're going to serve it, we're going to put rice in a bowl. Add the beef, and whoever wants to add the juice, will add the juice. All right, here we go. We got my bowl of rice. Gonna take one of them out. Let's get one of the ones that has, oh, this one has a lot of meat on it still. That one looks good. Take that out. Put it right on the bowl of rice. Okay, now we're gonna add the juice. Add the flavorful broth to the rice. I'm not gonna do too much for this one. A nice juice on top of the meat. Enough to soak into the white rice. It's very flavorful in the white rice. And there you go. A bowl of braised beef short ribs. Let me show you just how tender this beef got. You can see it comes right off the bone. Clean bone, no meat left in that bone. That is how tender the beef gets. Fall off the bone tender. It's like a way better version of pot roast. It's still too hot. Oh, too hot. These flavors remind me of our old house when you cooked good food. This is good too, but when you cook better food. But now you add everything new. But the meat is very tender and there's a lot of oil in here. But that tastes good. I like oil. Okay, I got a little of the braised beef here. You can see the rib. It falls right off the bone. It just comes right off. Let's taste some of that meat. See what it tastes like. I had some rice and this juice from the sauce. See what it tastes like. Oh. Oh. Mmm. That's a meat flavor I don't think I've ever had before. Oh, it's just so good. It's so tender, flavorful. The rice adds a nice contrast. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Wow. Better make some yourself. See what I'm talking about. Mmm. Since you made it this far, 
You should have chomped down that like button, just like my kids chomped down their braised beef ribs. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of all my new videos that come out on Mondays. And just to mess with people who don't watch the outro, be sure to comment below and include the word rice aroni. Thanks for watching and have a happy and healthy day.